Okay. All right. In the jig is the rear fuselage of NX611. This is the first part of NX611 fuselage to be made airworthy. The rear hangar doors are open, allowing the light to reflect on the new formers Dave has completed and trial fitted. This is on the port side. He has one more former to make on the port side in front of the red painted cross section of the jig. This is former 34. On the starboard, Dave has made the first two formers which have been painted and are temporary fitted. He has four doorway formers, two of which fit inside each other, giving the doorway strength. This is on the starboard side. And two other formers just past the doorway to make. After that, on the starboard side. The leading edge of the French wing, NX664. Keith has finished drilling off the repair section from last week and already has been into the paint shop and out again and reassembled with skin pins. There are two large studs and nuts either side of the spar which go into the boom. I'm not sure what is fitted to them. I'll have a word with Keith later on. This is the piece Keith fitted to splice the repair to the structure. <laughs> Another skin back from the painters. Dennis. Dennis is working on the port wing trailing edge. This will be nearly a new complete unit as it was badly damaged and a lot of corrosion. Now oh, Dennis. Now then. Why is that bit propped up like that? Because these angles go up and that one goes down. So the light flat on there, it won't be flat. Oh, of course, yeah. I didn't, so I I didn't see that, Tim. So I can only do, I'm doing this half. Yeah. As best I can. And then, just pick that up. That's the old piece. We've already done a remake, a new piece. Put that on and then, when this comes off, I can put them holes in. There. Yeah. I'll make a former for this side and then a former for the other side. Then you can bend them over. One coming up, so. Yeah, I see now, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Just if you look at it. I know what you're saying. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so it can only go so far. Yeah. Oh, can you? Well, until you get the other wooden formers cut. The trouble is now, all the machinery's gone. It's down there. When will, it, when will they hope to get it sorted, do they know? When the Mas start the is on. The mezzanine's going in on, starts on Monday. Yeah. So it's going to be a few weeks. All I can do is cut the wood out, roughly, but I can't yeah. finish it to fit. Yeah. Same with these, I can only go so far. Yeah. Cut the metal out and, you know. Good. Keep going, kid. Just it's keep coming. Going. Just keep plodding, mate. Yeah. 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 It's all a good day. Jacob's working on the display wingtip. 
Top of the wing, isn't it? Top of the wing tip. Yeah, top, right? top of the wing tip. And this is where your sweep would be. So that would sit there, roughly there. And then your uh, bit of mahogany would sit there. So I've got a couple of bits filled up. And then this needs to be riveted onto the stringers at the top of the wing tip yeah. as an assembly, basically. And what are you manufacturing the uh, stringer oh. end attachment brackets? Oh, you're still on those, are you? No, sorry, stringer attachment brackets. Now, these are slightly different ones to what I was doing last time. Oh, so. Let's have a good report from you then, Dave. <laughs> I ain't got much to report. I'm on the last one on the um, port side. So. Yeah. Did you get the inner formers cut out for the doorway in wood? The patterns? No, I had to do the wood for this. Oh, did you? This, yeah, because for some reason we had all the wooden formers made, but, but not for this particular one. So I had to make that one myself, which has put me back a bit. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, but I'm just marking it out now, and then once that's in, that's that side done. So they'll be, so they'll be able to um, do the stringers and the skins while I'm on the other side out of the way. Yeah. So that, that's where we're at. Hmm. So yeah, that, that, that put me back a, a day and a half or so. <laughs> I'm not used to working with wood either, so it turned yeah. out all right. Going all right, Keith. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, um, I meant to ask you, what does this stud or nut and bolt hold on here? Riveted to the ribs. Sits on and that's bolted down. And then that is riveted to that. Are they a forged item or a manufactured item? <coughs> well, there's two, what this? Yeah. Well, on the drawing it says it's either or. Oh, Originally see, yeah. they were made from extrusion. Yeah. L section extrusion. L forty. Yeah. And I've got um like a, a tapered slotted away on this so I've got to make some new one. Wires is a because that sits at an angle, that packer is tapered oh. and it sits yeah. Because this rib is at an angle, it's yes. not at 90 degrees to the, to the spark. Yeah. So that sits on there like that, that's riveted through there. Yeah. 
and that seat and that and then that will sit on there get bolted up and then it's riveted to the yeah and what it does is it just transfers the load yeah. from the spar or from the rib to the spar yeah and just ties it all in that is why that piece is cut away is it to, um, to, to it, 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 it might be I, I don't know usually when they're done like that it's just a they waste them away to lay the stress off yeah as it yeah. steps down it lays the stress off because yeah, then it steps down again onto the spar you see yeah because if you if you had a complete cut off point there you'd have a, a stress line yeah there but because it's like that the stress gets laid out yeah. along and that's what it's for yeah. I'm making some new ones You've got to make some new ones, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you can, you can make them by the drawer and it says you can make them from flat plate. Yeah. But it means you've got to heat treat it. I was going to say, it would soon crack, wouldn't it? Yeah, because it's... Um, so what sort of temperature would you go up to that then? 500 degrees. 500, yeah. i leave it to that. A so thousand's melting point, isn't it? Or just, I don't know what the yeah. melting point yeah. of... Uh, and then how long have you got to work? Do you work while they're warm still? No, you, what you have to do is you heat it up, leave it to soak, and then you quench it. Yeah. And then you've got, I think it's three hours working time. Yeah. And it starts to age harden. Yeah. And then over 72 hours, yeah. it will go back. Yeah. I'm not quite sure exactly, but I think it goes back to T81. It won't go back to T3. No, no. It will go back slightly harder. And do you bend it in one go or do you have to bend it over gradual, like in stages? Well, uh, uh, when I fold it, if, if you bend it, you wouldn't if bend, you bend it, it in one go, yeah. what you'll end up with is you'll end up with a, a flat. You won't end up with a nice curve. I see, yeah, yeah. So what you normally do is you bend it 45 degrees and take it out, reverse it, and then bend it at 45 degrees the other 45 degrees up to 90 yeah. and then you'll end up with a nice even curve because yeah. otherwise you end up with a flat spot yeah yeah and there. it's then thin then isn't yeah, it? and then you've got a stress line along that yeah. flat spot yeah. that was good Keith thanks a lot you're welcome and that was take two folks because the first <laughs> time I forgot to press record <laughs> thanks Keith you're good on you yeah. I'll leave it running till I get out of the building now. <laughs> oh, and that's where you was riveted along the top. Yeah, just working my way and along. You just the work top. along and then you come down. Then I come down. Then do the second line both sides. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll just do this this side first, all the way down, and then I'll oh, go well, down yeah, the other yeah. side and do exactly the same to the yeah, other side. Yeah. Oh, yes, you've come down here on this one, yeah, yeah and along basically. the bottom. Start from the middle there, pull it down into shape, then work your way down the ribs, yeah. pull that in, then do the second stringer. <coughs> That's what I did there. Yeah. Riveted the, the butt strap up, yeah. carried on, did the second stringer, finished off the butt strap, and then the last bit. This is on the on the bottom, the leading edge goes straight onto the angle. It hasn't got the skin sitting underneath it. No. The skin butts up against it. So you've chamfered that to <coughs> suit the thickness of the skin then, have you? Yeah, that, that, I've just followed the same profile as it was originally. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's basically the, the step on it is the thickness of the skin. Yeah. Yeah. So when it falls down, it's just a, yeah. a flush run on. Lovely. Thanks a lot, mate. All right, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Chris has been progressing with the nose of the fuselage from NX664, the French Lancaster. He's not in today though. This structure is being moved due to alterations in the workshop. Started cleaning it up. Chris has finished the three patches on the side of the nose of the Lancaster NX664. All 
all the noises from Keith today. Riveting the leading edge front wing. Not a lot to report this week on the restoration of NX611. This is the B25 bomber with its fuselage split. Les has completed the task of polishing out the corrosion from the bottom cord of the rear spar. This is now being painted along with a transport joint ready for reassembly. I ask Aid what these cables and pulley operate. They're aileron control. Oh, they're aileron. So that's the aileron aft and forward quadrants. And the reason they're in is because um, when we close this together, we can't get them in. So they have to be just loosely hung in there. So when we put it together, that the stud does that have a bearing this end, does it? Yeah, it's got bear it's got bearings at both ends, and it's got a long stud about. I don't know, a foot long stud that goes through it. Yeah. It's already got a nut on the back. So that that stud there goes through the hole in the rear spar web. You can see Oh it. I see in the middle of it. And then yeah. it gets a nut on the other end and that's that's what holds it in. And then obviously the wire comes out. Yeah. And then um, the, the the front the front quadrant cables are connected um, to the pilot's end and then the rear ones go out to the wings. Go out through the to the wings to the ailerons. Yeah, yeah. So that's fundamentally how it how it is. So that has to be in. The other thing that goes in that gap is uh, the the flap emergency actuator goes in there. But you can't put that you can't put that in before this is closed up. We've got to get it in afterwards. Yeah. So that's going to be quite a challenge. And what is that for? Emergency for putting the flaps so down for when the, the, get, when yeah, the cables forget, go for getting the flaps down yeah. when the if the hydraulics have failed. The flaps are hydraulic. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a hydraulic ram that, uh, and a load of bell cranks. But the um, but there's um, the flaps are hydraulic. But there's um, a cable activated balance system. That's right. That's what I thought those wheels were. That's yeah, what I was trying to get. It's a different set. Um, and then, but you can wind that down. Yeah. That's loosely how it goes. Yeah. So hopefully this afternoon we'll start closing it together. Oh, will you? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I see you've got God the um, face all cleaned up and painted. Yeah, it's all done, and all the um, all the corrosion on the uh, and the rear spar has been blended and measured and treated and painted. And <laughs> Good. Yeah, so hopefully. <laughs> Sorry. It won't be. It won't be the last time it goes it comes apart, but it. No. It should be um, the last time for quite a while. Will you put uh, a sealant round the? Yeah, uh, yeah. I can't remember the name of it, but um, yeah, there's, there's a sealant goes on just to stop the water yeah. getting in. So yeah, the next thing is move all this stuff out of the way. And then get this out of the way, and then slide it up. And swizz it. And yeah. hope, hope it all fits back together again. Uh, have you cleaned and had the wheel painted? Yeah, that, that's all been stripped off and painted and re-sprayed. Yeah. Is the bearings all right? Yeah, yeah. 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 the cables will need, um, in due course, the, cab the cables will need changing because they're old. Yeah. Of, of all the cables, they're some of the better ones. Yeah. Can't you send them away to have them checked for um, strength? I don't think so. I, I don't know. Because I know that on sling cables, they're down to be yeah, very long. I don't think so. I mean, some of those have actually got broken strands in. Oh. There are some. One, one of them was key. Yeah. But I think you know, if you wanted to do anything more than taxi, I think it would be. Yeah, perfect. You know, right. change them. Yeah. Right, and quite a few other things. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks, Dave. She's progressing. Yeah. That's all going very well. Yes. Rides flat, so it'd be easier to stand in it. Right? That's true. Yeah. And you can perhaps even get more in, then would you get ten in there? If the Lancaster does at the moment. Might be pushing it a bit. Well, two in here, one in the turret, three. Yeah, you'd have to load it in the right order because they're quite tail heavy these. So um but if it, I mean, you could have you could certainly have one in the bomb bombardier's position. Yeah. You could possibly get two in the bombardier's position. When you say tail heavy, it's liable if you've got it 
balanced one then. Yeah, he does sit on his backside, yeah. It says so, it's, it's in all the books, you know, don't, I, think, I can't remember what the figure is, but you don't have many, you don't clamber in the back. Until you've got some Until weight in the front. front. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah it's, it's very, it's quite finely balanced. Yeah. So you're not supposed to do that. So, but yeah, I mean, you, I, mean I don't know, I mean, it's not my thing, but you could, have, you could certainly have somebody in the bombardier's position. You could possibly have two in there because there's yeah. a seat as well as a line position. There's, um, there's the uh, navigator's position behind the, the air crew. I presume you'd need uh, some someone seats. driving and, and an engineer in there, so that'd be yeah. two. And then you'd need, you could certainly get one in the navigator's position. You could get two on the gunner's shelf. Yeah. And then once they are in, you could there's um, a wireless operator's position back here. Because this is one a here. separate unit, but unless you climb through that. Uh, oh, it's got its own door. Yeah, and yeah, what so I meant is, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can clamber over the top, but it, I, mean, I don't think you'd ask Not for paying, paying guests to do that. <laughs> so, uh, but you can certainly, once that, the front's loaded, you could even possibly ballast the front. You could get certainly one in the radio place, you could have a couple of waist gunners and a tail gunner if you wanted. So, I mean, it's a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. But you, it's just a, it's a matter of balancing, yeah. I think. And also, I mean, um, someone's going to have to have a serious look at the ingress and egress because it's it's not easy to get in and out of. No. You know, I mean, both both sets of steps are vertical. Yes. To start. Yeah, you've got to be careful who goes up there. Yeah, you? and then getting into the bombardier's position is a hole about 18 inches square, so it's quite tight. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it's not yeah. easy, but that's sort of down the line, isn't it? Yeah, it is. When do you, like, what's the programme to get it up for taxi then, time-wise? I think Andrew would like it next year yeah but I don't know whether no. that no. Yeah. well obviously yeah I mean nobody knows how, what's achievable but we are a lot of bits down you know for getting it running now we have the engines that we're going to fit for running aren't even in for recon yet are oh, those are two in Canada I believe so yeah no. I think they're in transit actually now I think they're going to wherever it is that they're going to do them so so that there's pro I mean, so that's quite an, I mean they've obviously got to be fitted yeah uh, and then there's a whole plethora of systems that need to be connected to that you know and like the whole hydraulic yeah. system fundamentally because the, the hydraulic system so complex on it or relatively complex on it yeah. that they share quite a lot of common returns so you can't just pick the hydraulic system you want oh, and get no, it going because yeah. they, they use common return lines yeah. back to the tank so that that's so the old kind Really. Uh, so, talking about balance, even with the fuel tanks full, because it, yeah. it looks though the fuel tanks are... Well, the fuel tanks are fundamentally in the wings, which yeah, are pretty so much on the balance point, aren't that's they? That's so right, that's what I went, just had a look here, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so you see you've got the balance point here, yeah. and that's where the split is. Is yeah. that two double doors, is it yeah. coming down? That's where, the, well, that's where the fuel tanks are, Yeah. or some of them. Uh, and there's uh, some more. Uh, so it's not really going to help you if yeah. they were full of that. And then it, I've got, and the bomb boat is pretty much centred on the undercarriage as well. So even, is, if you've got the bomb boat, even if you've got it full of bombs, it's it's still yeah centred around that. So it's always tail light. So that's why the book says yeah don't get in the back. Because <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be really embarrassing, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, Everybody it, it falls just, that way. Just sits there. There was a, there was a. Oh, you might have seen pictures of it. There's a famous incident at Bryce Norton where they refuelled um, a VC-10 in the wrong order. No, I didn't. Well, no. they filled the fin up. Um, so they filled the fin up and it ended up... <laughs> sort of literally on, on its backside. <laughs> but a, a, a VC-10, you know, it's a big aeroplane. When, yeah. when that's pivoted up, it's a long way up. Yeah. And it wasn't as simple as defuelling it and letting it fall down because that would put an enormous amount of strain on the aircraft. Yeah. So they had a right... It was there for quite a long time. You know, it's obviously wrong. Yeah. With the nose sticking up in the air. Yeah. And they have to kind of like work out how to get yeah. it down there. Try not, look on the internet, so. Yeah, well done, yeah. yeah. But we don't want to do it with this because yeah. it's an old girl, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's it's look, I can't remember how many people says you can have in the back, but it's not very many. It might only be one. And yeah, I don't think, don't think even one person is supposed to go down to the rear gunner's position. It's if the front's so down. lightly balanced yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite light. It's quite it's quite specific in the book yeah. about not doing it. So when it was going on for takeoff, then pulling the nose up would be quite easy. 
Well, the thing about... And you'd lose your steering, wouldn't you, in the sense? I know by well, then well, you'd By then, be... hopefully, you got the rudder yeah. working. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that, you know, obviously, when this gets round to taxing, is that everybody's going to be aware of is that yeah. you've got to keep the stick forward because you need to keep the weight on the front. Yeah. Whereas on the lank, of course, it's yeah. the other way around. Oh, it's got this big thing at the back. You can see this. This, that's a big steel thing. That's nothing other than a, a thing to stop the, the aeroplane hitting the ground. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's actually a bump stop, yeah. I know it looks like a little, it looks like a miniature H2S. Yeah, it's it's a, a, full of, it's full of good is in there. Yeah, no, it's just a big lump of steel, it's full of rust. So, uh, yeah, it's just to stop the, so that's to stop. If it does come down. Yeah, yeah it's, it hits that, which you can change. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Would that turn on take off? Would he pull it that low ever? Well, it shouldn't. No. But <laughs> it, yeah, that's just in that. It shouldn't. Yeah, it's just. They all rush to this end. It's, it'll just, come it, down. it's just in case, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so that's there. And yeah. you see, when you've got paying passages on, they're not going to be strict, though. You've got to stand here. They might nip down to the end. Well, I, I think they'll. It depends who the crew person is, but I think they'll stay exactly where they're told, aren't they? Yeah. I think people do, don't they? <laughs> people do what they're told. Yeah. I think so. I'm sure they do. So, yeah. yeah, I think, yeah, do yeah. what they're told. Oh, so, yeah. that's interesting. So, there you go. Yeah. That is it. Good. Enjoy. Yeah. Well, I was going to sit. Yeah, it's getting dinner time. Yeah, lunch time, then we'll put it together after. Yeah. Thanks, Dave.